A simple tomato sauce is the key ingredient for so many preparations. So in this video, I'm going to show you my recipe and technique for the best tomato sauce you'll ever have with just five ingredients. Hello everyone, I'm Chef Sabrina. I teach you cooking and baking techniques so that you're always eating deliciously. So if you're into that, please consider subscribing and ring the bell. All right, so so many dishes have tomato sauce as a base or just they're just simply with tomato sauce. So it is very, very important that you learn how to make this really well. And once you do it once or twice, you'll realize, actually, once you do it once and you watch me do it, it's gonna be a breeze for you to make. And you're gonna wanna make it all the time because it's very easy to make, very quick, and it lasts a really long time because you can freeze it, you can jar it, you can just leave it in the refrigerator. So you're gonna make this over and over again for your house. So here are the five ingredients. Extra virgin olive oil, good quality. Doesn't have to be from Italy or from anywhere specifically. Just make sure it's extra virgin olive oil, first cold press, good quality, okay? Very important. Then we have carrots. I like red onions, but you can use yellow or white onions as well, or a combination, whatever you have at home. Some whole garlic cloves, not chopped, and whole peeled canned tomatoes, preferably San Marzano tomatoes. And if you don't know what San Marzano tomatoes are, just uh, watch my video on the south of Italy where I explain what they are. But this is something very, very important that you should always have in your pantry, whole peeled canned tomatoes. It's very important because you can use it for so many things, even just like to crush if you're making homemade pizza or if you're making a stew or a brace, you can just add them as they are. Um, don't get the ones that are crushed, please, because they tend to add a lot of acidity to your dish. But if you get them whole, you can do so many more things and they're much sweeter that way. So these are San Marzano tomatoes. And as you can see, peel, hold, and we are just gonna use two cans, but all the ingredients and the, the recipe as usual are gonna be on my website and through my Instagram account. So you don't have to take notes right now. Just uh, watch the preparation because it's gonna go by very fast. And then, well, of course, I always have salt and pepper, but you know, we have water, we have electricity, we have underwear, we have salt and pepper, right? It's like a must. <laughs> So I'm not even counting those as a part of the, of the five ingredients. All right, so let's get started. I have a big pot here. And something important that I wanna show you is all of my pots have a thick bottom because thick bottom pots just distribute the heat much more evenly all throughout. And it prevents that things stick to the bottom easily. It doesn't mean that they won't stick at all if you just leave them and forget about them, but you have a, a less of a chance to happen. So I like thick bottom pots. This is a good height. Uh, a bit higher would be maybe for boiling or for making a stock. But this one is good because I still have some length uh, going upwards where I, I will have some evaporation, but it's not high enough that it's gonna take too long and it's not too short that it's gonna make my sauce maybe burn also on the bottom. So this is a good height and, but I mean, whatever pot you have, it's just that if you wanna get specific with what I use, that's what I use, that's it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add some extra virgin olive oil to my pan and I'm going to Add some garlic cloves, about three whole garlic cloves. And if you've seen me cook before, you know that I never chop garlic because I don't like the strong flavor of garlic and it's not very traditional in Italian cuisine either. But if you like chopped garlic, just by all means, just do whatever you prefer. I just don't like it. So I tend to always infuse the extra virgin olive oil with the garlic and then I remove the garlic cloves. Once they've given all their beautiful aromas and flavors away, then I just throw them away. So that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna add some salt as well to start the dehydration process. Okay, so once the olive oil is infused with the garlic, the next thing I'm gonna add are the carrots. And right after that, the onions. Now here I have everything ready, but honestly, if I was doing it as a regular cooking day at home, what I would do is that I would first chop the carrots and then add them. And as they are sauteing, 
I chop the onions. So that way you're a little bit more efficient and you don't have to wait to have both of them ready. The reason why I would do the carrots first is because they're thicker and they tend to take a little bit longer to cook. So if you chop the carrots first and add them, by the time that you add the onions, they have been already been cooking for a little bit. So they're gonna be basically done pretty much at the same time. So that way you have a nice flow and you're a little bit more efficient and faster in the kitchen. So that's a chef's tip. So and now I'm gonna add the carrots, like I said, onions, and always, always, always add salt. So seasoning is very important as you go because you don't want you want every single ingredient to taste good. Even if it's just you know a carrot and an onion, you want them to be seasoned. You want them to taste really well. And it's actually easier to season as you go. You end up using less salt if you season as you go than if you have to add everything at the end, like all the salt at the end, because then you taste like everything is insipid and you tend to add a lot more to try to reach that um, good flavor that you're looking for. So seasoning as you go is a very important thing in all cooking that you do. Another tip, if you're afraid that maybe your uh, vegetables are going to burn on the bottom, cover the pot as you wait for them to, to saute. You want them translucent. If the onions or the carrots get a little bit golden brown, that's fine as well. Actually, you're, we're gonna process everything at the end and a little bit of like a burning or, or a little golden color on the veggies is actually not a bad thing. It just gives a lot more flavor, but it would be a different type of sauce, okay? It will be maybe for a braise or a stew. But if you want a simple, clean tomato sauce, just make sure that your veggies are sauteed on until translucent, so they're soft basically, okay, but with no color. And in order to do that, if you need to do other things and you're afraid that maybe because you're not moving them often, they can burn on the bottom, then cover the pot because that's gonna prevent the evaporation or at least it's going to evaporate a lot slower and that way you're gonna have more time and they're gonna basically like steam and cook and saute everything at the same time a lot slower. So while we wait for the veggies, let me show you. For the canned tomatoes, since they're whole, you could just add the can, um, and I'll do that with one of them. You can just add the can completely, just as is, uh, inside your pot, and then just crush it with your spoon. Or if you feel like you need to release some frustration, then you put them in a bowl and you crush them with your hands, okay? And be careful because they have a lot of juice inside, so you don't wanna like, squirt it all <laughs> like this <laughs> all over the place. Um, another key thing, see what I'm saying? Another key thing is that I always use a black shirt or a black t-shirt, a black top or an apron when I make tomato sauce because for some reason, it doesn't matter at what point during the process, I always get some tomato sauce on my shirt. Always. It can be the tiniest, the tiniest and little bit like little speck, but I always manage to get some tomato sauce on my shirt. So I don't know if you're the same way, but it's just a tip. Wear a dark top or one that you don't care that much about, just in case. Now, once we have everything in the pot, again, let's make sure that we season and also a little bit of black pepper. Not much, just to season. We don't want the flavor of pepper. We just wanna season the sauce. Okay, so everything is in and I'm gonna cover the pot, but I'm gonna leave a little hole. Okay, so no, no I'm not gonna cover it completely. I'm gonna just like partially cover it so there's still some evaporation and it, that will thicken the sauce and make everything cook a lot nicer. And so now we just have to wait. You can do a bunch of other things right now. I leave them like this for about 20 to 30 minutes, but then I process them and I'll show you how I do that. I basically just blend everything in a blender and then at that point you can either return them to the pot and then cook them for as long as you want or you could then freeze your sauce or jar your sauce. And the difference is that if you know that you're gonna be using this tomato sauce for another preparation that's gonna take a long time to cook, then you don't have to keep cooking it right now because you're still gonna do that, you know, the next time you, you cook or you use your sauce. Whereas if you are going to make a pasta right now or if you're going to 
I don't know, make something else that you need to have your sauce ready to go and it's gonna be a quick preparation, then after you process it, put it back in your pot and keep cooking it maybe for another half an hour or even another hour if you want. So it really depends on what you wanna do. I guess the safest way, if you have the time, just do it now and that way you can just freeze it and have it completely done and completely ready next time you wanna use it. So that's why I encourage you to do like a bigger quantity because it's so versatile and it's easy to make. So you might as well make a big quantity and then separate it into little containers, put them in your freezer and just take them out as you need it. And you don't have to make it, you know, every time you, you want to have something with tomato sauce because I mean, it, it can really save the day to have a little bit of tomato sauce in the freezer. We're just gonna wait a little bit and then I'll show you how I blend everything. Okay, so 20 minutes have gone by and basically all I need to do now is transfer it to my blender and process it. And you know, honestly, if you like the chunkiness in a sauce, then this is perfectly fine as is. I mean, honestly, if you wanted to, you could be sauteing maybe some beef and pork and veal all ground and then making an amazing bolognese sauce with this. You don't have to process it in order to make bolognese because actually when you, uh, traditionally, you do see the pieces of carrots and onions in a traditional bolognese sauce. So, you know, it depends on what you like. I like to have, since, like I said, I usually make a big quantity and freeze it. I like to blend all of it, but if I was making it maybe really quick for a specific type of pasta or a stew, I could just use it like this. It's perfectly fine. It has a lot of flavor anyway. It's just that the texture changes and it will depend on what you want to do. But for now, I'm going to transfer it to my blender and process it. And then I'll show you how that looks like. Now I'm gonna do this in two batches because otherwise it's gonna be too much for the blender. Another important thing is that you let it cool a little bit before you add it to the blender because otherwise when you turn on the blender with the heat, you're gonna have a lot of expansion and the sauce can, it can overflow from the blender. So just make sure that it's cool at room temperature or it can be a little bit warmer than room temperature, but just let it cool a little bit because it can be a little bit dangerous. So you better, you're better off doing it in several batches if you're afraid or if you're in a hurry and you need to do it immediately, then do it in smaller batches instead of big batches and you know uh, you don't want to redecorate your kitchen with a bunch of tomato sauce all over the place so I'm gonna do it in two batches this is already at room temperature and then I'm gonna transfer it all together to my pot again <laughs> I forgot to mention when I was sauteing the veggies is that I don't use celery. A lot of people ask me and I personally don't use celery because in Italy not everybody uses celery and that is because celery in Italy is actually very very strong so it would overpower all the other ingredients. However if you are used to making it uh, with celery or if you want to use it just by all means do so. Um, however I will still recommend to use the inner stalks the ones that are lighter in color and softer in flavor. The celery can be very tricky when it comes to overpowering and use less than the other two ingredients okay. So here is my second batch and I like it really, really velvety. So I process my tomato sauce for, you know, a few minutes until it's very, very smooth. And the other thing that people ask me uh, a lot about is why is my tomato sauce a little bit orange? And that's because of the carrots. I don't add sugar, please don't add sugar. If you use good ingredients, like meaning good extra virgin olive oil and good tomatoes, you don't need to add any sugar. So the carrots add all the sweetness that I need and also the red onions, they are very sweet. So I don't need to add any sugar. I do use a lot more carrots than most people. Um, it's almost the same amount as the onions, but you know, it's up to you. I like it like this. It, it doesn't taste like carrots at all. I promise you that it tastes like tomato sauce and it's not acidic. And now basically, like I said, you could even, you could return it to the pot. You could do half and half. You can now freeze this uh, or return it to the pot and, and keep cooking it. So basically the only thing we need right now is like a little spaghetti, some uh, Parmesan cheese, and that's it. 
Uh, also notice I don't add basil. I don't cook the basil inside my, my tomato sauce. A lot of people do that, but don't do that because basil is a fresh herb that actually doesn't withstand the heat very well. If you see it afterwards, it's actually brown. It gets really bitter and it's not good for you to be eating an herb like that. Basil is supposed to be used fresh, just right at the end on top of your finished product or your dish, okay? So you're like spaghetti with tomato sauce and basil, but the basil should be added right at the end when it's fresh and it perfumes everything, okay? Um, but now what I need to do is taste, right? Because we have to taste. So let me see. Mm. All I need right now is a piece of bread or the spoon. I could keep eating this like that. It is not acidic, I promise you. I taste the olive oil and I taste the tomatoes. That's it. It's so well balanced. This I could use for so many things right now. So it is perfectly like this, but I can return it to the, to the pot. And if I want it maybe thicker, I can just cook it for another 30 minutes. You don't need to cook it forever. A good tomato sauce just starts with good ingredients, just like everything else. So use good ingredients and make tomato sauce. You're gonna see how easy it is and how many dishes you can make with it. So, and it doesn't even need any more seasoning, which is important too. Like I said, if you season as you go, at the end, you don't need to add anything else. So you end up adding less, see, uh, less salt, okay? So I'm just gonna keep eating this. I might just boil some spaghetti and make myself a really nice plate of pasta. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let me know if there are any dishes or any techniques or any ingredients that you would like to tackle. Write it on the comments below because you are the one that are giving me all the ideas, okay? So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you the next time.